Never miss another live stream again. Hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and click see all notifications. What's the motherfucking deal? Uh, really? I hope y'all are all having a fantabulous. What is this? It motherfucking Friday. I've been lit. I don't know. Shit been going by so fast. It is Friday. There's supposed to be some fuck em action going on today. So, I mean, we can't forget about that. But I hope y'all having a good Friday. And it's not fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but y'all already know what it is, man. Uh, we weren't able to connect on Wink Wednesday. So, it's Wink, Wink, Wink Friday tonight. Uh, also, fuck em Friday. And, um... Also, we're gonna talk about it. we're gonna talk about a few things, but y'all know what this is. It's Salt Sports. If you're not familiar with Salt Sports, Salt Sports is a Houston, Texas Homer Network. So that means we're talking about all sports, but only Houston. With that being said, we're just gonna talk about a couple of things. Maybe we're just gonna talk about a few dilly dillies and all that other good shit. So I hope y'all are are in a good mood. Cause we're just gonna talk about. That. I mean, it ain't a lot of news popping out. You know, OTAs or a thing, but you know, we're just gonna talk about some of the ex ex Texans hating. We're gonna talk about some of the possibilities for the Rockets in the near future, you know, things of that nature. But y'all know we can't we can't get this thing started without the motherfucking me roll call. So hey, if you are from Houston, man, shout out your side with pride. If you're not from the city, man, this is what you gotta do. You gotta let us know where you're from. You know, if you're a state, town, city, block, hood, avenue, cul-de-sac, you know what I'm saying? Latitude, Cold. longitude, all that good shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> However you identify, man. Oh, uh, uh, however you identify, whoever you represent, man, you know what I'm saying? Let us at least show you a little bit of love back. That's the least we could do. <laughs> That's the least we could do, man. Uh, you know, for showing some love to the sauce, man. So already. Uh, you from the part of the city right near the beach. Uh, all right, that's 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 where it go down. Um, but have y'all seen that this 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 blue Galveston? What the fuck is I tell you, I ain't fucking with that shit, man. Y'all can't no get me. Thing. Man, you see the pictures? No, I'm, I'm not. This shit been brown my entire life. Y'all think I'm fucking with this bro. new blue shit? No, y'all got me fucked up. That, that shit, shit gumbo, bro. That shit's like the color of gumbo, bro. Like, how the fuck is gumbo? That do not exist Man, there's blue water in Galveston. I, say, I, saw, I saw the pictures. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, y'all go swimming in that shit if y'all want to. Y'all get duped by the hell. Maybe Surfside but, got some of the better water. <laughs> so, like, I, mean, I don't know, bro. And that's a long-ass trip to Galveston, bro. Man, that's a- I'm just saying, they, look, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't done something to that shit. I feel like it's got to be some kind of chemicals or something like that. How the fuck does the water just all of a sudden be blue? If, if look, if you're not religious and Galveston water and just naturally turn blue, that's a, look, that's a sign of the times, man. Because that shit didn't been dirty ass since day one. Since man, man, since that motherfucker been in action, dog. Like so, yeah, like it, yeah, that whole ain't nothing but full of like, you know, crocodile shit and like <laughs> motherfucking shark, shark throw up. And like <laughs> bones, like it's it, and you know, you know, just gold residue or some no, shit like that man. floating up to the top. It's like it's, it's <laughs> shit down there at the bottom of this. Of this <laughs> shit, I don't know what Galveston they been to, oh, but man. not Texas. Man, man, that's what I'm saying. Look, it's, it's it's something different going on. But man, let's see, what we got in the mix tonight. Man, we are gonna show a little bit of love. But yeah, that 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 shit right there. Uh, it astounded me. I was just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is real. This is this is something to, uh, okay. to definitely take a take a look at. Uh, let's see what I can say. Let's see, what we got showing some love in the, in the in the motherfucking house tonight. Man, things. The coon, Jeremiah, Houston, Homer. What's the motherfucking deal? J Pack, uh, Jeremiah. There you go. Real family. Brandon three three five. Uh, Hector Rodriguez, Tony Hernandez. What's the motherfucking deal? Ob highlights. Always good to see you, man. Uh, Mrs. Voodoo C. David Pritchard. What's the motherfucking deal? Let's see, we got Berkeley Boss. Jay Dills just woke up already. Uh, Dewey Harris, what's the motherfucking deal? Say Global Home killing the current or something. Sharks got a fair chance now. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on with that shit. That shit is, it, 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 like I say, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's something shaking because Galveston turning blue. But if it's, if it's natural, I'm worried, but I'm pretty sure it's some type of chemical or oh, some type of shit to. Yeah, they, they doing they, some they, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't no, just ain't no way that shit just blewed up nah. one day. Um, so here we go, man. So I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, one of those things being the comments from some ex Texans or an ex Texan in particular, actually. And I kind of want to know, discuss my thoughts. I don't want to know your feelings on it. Uh, there's a guy I chop it up with from time to time, uh, on Twitter against the grain. And we had a, a an extended discussion about the 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 situation, and like I say, so I just kind of want to know with Sauce Nation how y'all feel and and what everybody kind of thinks, you know, about 
Brandon Brooks in the comments that he made. So basically he was saying that, um, you know, he enjoyed the Kubiak era and he didn't like, you know, how Bill O'Brien came in. I'm not sure. What, what, what was uh, Brooks here? One I year or two either. year? Was Brooks here one year or two year? Brooks here was here a year. He was here under Bill B? the 2014 season. Okay. The year he got okay. here and okay. then he left. Okay. All right. So my thing is this, though. Now – First year head coach. Now we got to think of it. This is this is not the Bob that we've known so far. We're coming off of Gary Kubiak being, you know, whatever he was in that point in time, and right. we're we're installing a new regime. Okay, we're trying to we're trying to do something different. We want to see something different going on with the Texans. The uh, guy just came from Penn State. It's a feel good story. All that other good shit. So he comes in trying to install the the Patriot way. We know the Patriot way is that. No player is bigger than the team unless your fucking name is Tom Brady. You know, they ain't selling him that shit. Anybody else is expendable. Um, And so, you know, Bill O'Brien tried to come in and implement that. Now, I don't knock him initially for that because you came from a winning organization. You saw how they were doing it. So you're thinking, oh, okay, I can just kind of duplicate what they did and and, and it's going to translate. First year head coach, he doesn't really have his own, you know, sense of culture. So he's copying somebody else. So it's not really natural. You know what I'm saying? It's it's imitation. Um, so I can understand what Book says. You know, he might have been used to Kubiak. You know, I know some players got special favors under Kubiak. You know, veterans and, and stuff like that got yep. love. And to be kind of reduced to, all right, hey, I didn't put in this work for a couple of years, and this guy that just came in and just kind of knocked everything I did to shit, I can understand that. Right. But at the same right. time, I don't think that I, – I don't think that my, – my, my big beef with Brooks is this. Like, I'm not mad at you for being upset with that when that shit happened. My beef is like, nigga, that was fucking years ago. You didn't want you a ring. You didn't moved on. You didn't. You one of the best guards in the in the in the league. You getting all kind of praise and all kind of other shit you got going for you. Why the fuck are you still mad about that? Even when we through the anxiety shits and all that other bullshit, weird shit you had going on out here. What is the point of being mad about that still? If you've moved on and gone to better places, and you only spent a, a year or so of your career in a situation like that. Well, I think for him, I think. The way that he's talking about it, I mean, because I didn't get to hear everything that he said. You know, I was trying to read some shit, but I was at work today when I came across the story. Mm-hmm. And um, in terms of, you know, how it seems to me, I mean, it was a certain way when Kubiak was here in terms of the players. I I think both coaches are both player coaches. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to rewarding veterans and to rewarding players, I think Kubiak rewarded his players for wins and shit that they did uh especially him being from houston i think it was a different culture and when you hear ex-texans whether it was andre johnson whether it was owen daniels or it's uh fucking anybody you know andre johnson you know all of these guys arian foster nobody has said anything wrong about gary kubiak thus far okay yeah, I could understand, okay, the culture and in terms of the way the team was being ran and you thought your way was going to end up winning, but Bill O'Brien is no different. And, you know, he and a lot of, I could say much better players have left under his tenure than the ones that were, that left under Kubiak's tenure. You can, you can make a case and say it's split down the middle and I could go for that. But, I mean, it's two totally – I mean, one of the things – I mean, it even tripped me out, you know, when Bill O'Brien first got here and, you know, Andre Johnson and Arian Foster and guys who were accomplished and doing so much and holding Houston Texas down because they were holding it down before Bill O'Brien got here. Bill O'Brien has been the same or less than since he's gotten here. Three consecutive records of the same thing being 9-7, and, and then you go from 4-12, and 12, and regardless – of guys playing, and I know people are going to make the argument and say that we had a lot of injuries. I mean, you got to be ready regardless if you if you're on the field or not. What the fuck are you in the league for if you ain't ready? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's a kind of you know you know I don't really want to venture off into too many you know into you know other avenues not dealing with the subject, but I mean, obviously it's something there if everybody that's been left over the last few years have either went all pro. You know, getting Pro Bowls, being noticed, being talked about, and winning Super Bowls, and being on teams and contributing to teams that know how to win. Obviously, I believe there's something there. 
it has to be something there. You nobody's gonna keep saying the same shit about you for years and years and years if it ain't true. Okay, okay. Now my thing, um now some guys I think, you know, they go yeah. off and fall in the favorable situation. Then I think we've had more talent leave under Bill O'Brien simply because I think the talent was starting to a lot of the talent that was starting to develop under the Kubiak regime and kind of peaked under that, you know, end up kind of venturing off once Bill O'Brien got here. I, I, I don't doubt that a lot of guys were not keen on that transition. I think right. I think Andre's situation was just more loyalty to the team, you know, no matter what. He kind of – he wanted to do it for uh, – you know, he wanted to do it for – you know, so as long as he yeah. did, uh, yeah. a couple more years, yeah. yeah. And so, like I say, to retire. yeah. So I could definitely understand. Like I say, there was some 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 bad blood between that. But my thing too, you got to look at it as a coach again. Like I say, taking out whatever the current record is, whatever it is. If you going into to new territory as a head coach, and you know they know you kind of a, a juvie. If you go in there and you're kind of buckling under pressure to certain players, you know, bigger names and, and, and egos and things like that, or showing favoritism, do you think that that would hurt, you know, the way some of these guys look at you? Do you think that you would have mixed reviews? And, of course, the players that you're treating with favor are going to like you. But then you think about these newer guys, I think they're going to see it a certain kind of way. So I don't necessarily blame him for coming and trying to attempt to lay a foundation. Was he successful at it? Uh-huh. I won't say that. But I don't blame him no. for – Trying to come in and, and implement something. Well, I can almost piggy, I can piggyback and, and play devil's advocate for the players and say, JJ Watt and guys over that period of time, can you could not say that they did not earn their spots? Did they not earn extra? Because they were doing all that they could on the teams and with the schemes and coaching that they were assembled to play with. I mean, it's not like guys have been in the greatest situation playing for the Houston Texans since before last year. I mean, it's not like, not not to say that it's a lot of guys here that you don't play with, and it's not that guys here aren't respected, because they are. They're in the mouths of every other player. They own social media. They own this and that and all these platforms, so it's not like people don't fuck with the Texans, or at least the talent of the team. It's just People see the writing on the walls and they hear the whispers and they hear shit that nobody outside the organization really gets to know. You're not even these damn B writers and guys who cover the team who have radio shows and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And they don't even have good enough knowledge to share with the general public on the team that they're supposed to report on. So if you're in that situation, I mean, look at what the fan base is going to be held to. What's up, man? That was the motherfucking I think, deal. I really think, I really think that with there's smoke, there's fire. It's when it comes to certain shit. I mean, it's it, it to me, it just look like it's all the pieces are adding up because nobody's really refuting what's being said. Hmm. So, I mean, if you and if you're not even trying to refute. I mean, and okay, well, you know, I, I got I'm, it. We'll, we'll look at it okay, well, here we can play. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a devil, the devil's advocate on that one. Okay, so we're talking about until last year, you said we really didn't, we really weren't in a situation. And it was one major piece that put us in that situation. Now, okay. outside of all those people, that one major piece was championing for Bill O'Brien, rooting harder than anybody else. Am I wrong? Yeah. And so, yeah. who matters outside of, of, of all that, really? And, and with that being said, whose opinion do you, do you value more? First year, Deshaun Watson under Bill O'Brien, or one year under Bill O'Brien, veteran player uh, Brandon Brooks. Who 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 would you well, value? I, well, I'm, I can't I can't be unfair that way because both of their situations are their situation, and how they played out is just how they played out. I mean, maybe maybe he had a problem with how he was being used. I mean, when we talk about this organization, we know that a lot of guys don't get to play to their full potential. Even Arian Foster, when I went back and re-listened to the interview that he had with Andre Johnson, with the exception of Andre Johnson feel that he wasn't being used right in the, in the red zone, Arian Foster piggybacked, like, right before he really even got to get to his point, I didn't even hear him say the first time. He was like, I definitely was being misused. Which is absolutely crazy. I mean, so if guys like that are being misused, who are the stars of the team, then why am I to think that that the trickle down theory is not going to be in place? Okay, okay. So, like I say, I, I think it's just been uh, a few different things with this team. Because, like I say, as I was looking at some old stuff, 
you know, it went back to uh, I, I, I dug up on some old shit, some shit I ain't actually didn't even catch at the time about, uh, right. you know, Amon Green and how he wasn't too keen on Rick Smith and uh, I want to say it was like Marcus Coleman and some of these guys. So I think is, is it a thing with this organization as a whole that you're just not putting the proper pieces together from the top down? And we always say that a culture, and I say a lot that an organization, it's, it's the, very, the very head, and we know who the head of this franchise right. is. Um, is, is, is are they not making the, the right decisions at the top? And again, it's carrying down, and I mean, the pieces are just not falling in place. So we've had plenty of talent. The talent has come through the Texas, so there's no excuse for that. I mean, what, what? Honestly, honestly, Honcho, you just answered your own question because we can think of how many athletes that left this and went to go win the following year in other organizations or at least go out to have some semblance of success to where they, they have to be taken seriously. Okay. okay. We really. We really haven't had that situation the other way around. Yeah. We haven't brought too many people here who we can say that we've developed who've had much better careers here than they had elsewhere. The only guy that we can say that about it is a consensus agreement that um, Jonathan Joseph is the best free agent that we've ever had. Were there disconnects? Were there things that people couldn't agree on if people's egos were at risk? Yeah, I'm, I mean, that's – that's, I mean, the greatest player in our history was just on record talking about that. So, obviously, he wasn't happy. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's absolutely crazy that he's one of the few players who left here who didn't get to do greater things once he left. He's, he's one of the few, but he's absolutely the best player who's ever been in our uniform, which is ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Um... I got a couple of questions I see in the chat, so I ain't, I ain't overlooking y'all. We're going to jump on those. I see Ray Ray asking, uh, what are your thoughts on Reed playing more at corner than safety in Cornell's defense? Now, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's something that's actually been, been said, or is that just something you're speculating on how would you feel about it? Uh, so I'm not sure about that. But He, he can't play both positions. That That's the that's type of versatility that he does have. Um, I wouldn't – I mean, he would definitely have the size to be able to do it. I think he has the speed, the closing speed, you know, and, and other things. And he definitely has the tackle ability and being able to finish on plays. So, I mean, you have that. But I think it would better suit him to be the uh, rover in the back and just be able to get plays and be more physical on the back end than having to play up. You know, I know he will in certain situations, but for this particular situation, I would want it personally. Yeah, I could agree with you on that one. Um, and, and there goes that, that, that word. That's the word I've noticed a whole lot, or that 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 you, that versatility. It, it's been like the, the, the buzzword of the Texans so far in this free agency and this, this offseason, versatility. That versatility word is starting to kill me because, I mean, I feel more comfortable with them saying, okay, hey, well, well Honey Badger's going to be – his home is at safety. But just with this, especially with what's his name being a, a little bit younger, um, right? You know, hey, let's go ahead, let's let's go ahead and let's sit him still. I mean, maybe, hey, maybe he's ahead of the game because somebody did say that as soon as he got drafted, he went back and pulled up like five or six of the Texans game that night and was studying film. So right. he might be ahead of the game, and I might be talking, look, that might be another situation where I was saying about. Um, uh, Deshaun, when I was saying, "Hey, let him chill. Let him get uh, a couple of games under Savage before he get in, or let him get no, a season." No, don't hold back progress. But this, this Reed, Reed might be ready, and so if he's ready like that, then hey, you know. So I'm, 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 I'm a chill on the rookie hate. If he, if he's got it, and like I said, I talk about that, that, that uh, professional pedigree, and so I know he's, yeah. I know he studied games with his brother, so he might be mentally ready already. You know yeah, what I mean? I think he is. So I think he's had the preparation to sit back and watch his brother and know what he can and he can't do. Plus, he has somebody in the league to show him what his own do's and don'ts should and shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can go and look, hey, okay, well, I see where you whiffed or where you could have made an impact on that play or you're not ferocious enough or you don't have the game speed or the closing speed or the intellect to really diagnose what that play was so that you can be there in that spot to make the play. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, you know, it's a plethora of things that could happen and versatility has only served us well on the defense. It is never, and it's a trip actually seeing, and we talking about versatility, people in the comment section have actually said that Bill O'Brien has been able to mold versatile players in this offense. And I was like, who? Yeah, you mm -hmm. could talk about on the defense where guys can do multiple things. Mm -hmm. Jadavian Clowney is a versatile player. Mm -hmm. 
he's a he's the he's the definition of a versatile player on this offense. I didn't see him dropping the coverage. He didn't he didn't give up a damn uh, a catch the whole season. You know, you do this, he can rush the pass. He can go against the run. He can he can just tear the fucking game up. Okay. And that's why guys like that get paid the way that they do because they can do more, more than one more than one thing and can do it well. He's one of the few, but in terms of the guys that we have on offense, especially when it comes to old linemen, I don't give a fuck. I don't want a fucking old lineman on this team playing. As long as Bill O'Brien is the coach, I don't care about versatility. Be good at what the fuck your your position is and do it and do it to the because we didn't gotten away. We don't even know what it's like to have a great offensive line anymore. We haven't seen it in so many years that you need players to just play the scheme, know what the fuck to do trust each other because that's the only way you win in this game a lot of the time the reason why we didn't win games is because we didn't fucking trust we didn't have the trust of the coaches and the coaches didn't trust the players i agree period i agree and trust period is that's a, the only way you lose trust major key all right so i'm gonna flip the script for a second man because we were uh i was looking at bleacher report today and bleacher report has just been disappointed with some of the shenanigans they've been pulling but they they dropped a little thing and now these are the same motherfuckers who were saying that the name the tuck wagon for the rockets was corny these motherfuckers dropped uh a picture saying can deshaun watson and deandre hopkins be the best duo in the nfl and i agree of course that they can but the name the oh, nickname yeah. that they gave them the defest crew the defense crew is that a cool name that's or is it like, fuck. that's what i was sitting here thinking i'm like this is the corny it's not even corny like it, it it's just lame it's just wax sounded because it's you just got, abysmal it, it's <laughs> that sounds like somebody just works it that sounds like some shit that somebody at pro football focus would say oh like that's just not even bro like just just go ahead and make sure you get the highest grade of all diesel so you can can and just chug it all and die Man. like you can't believe in yourself after this like you don't deserve you deserve to be impotent after coming oh. up with a bullshit name like that you don't deserve oh, to go in ever again and enjoy the festivities you just don't <laughs> these guys i don't know where they get this shit from and the corn is ah, i don't i don't i don't know man it's <laughs> shout out to my <laughs> shout out to my boy Big O man. I see him asking a question. I just Jeremiah, I see you got a question too. Um I want to jump I'm gonna jump on Big O question first because it's something that was very rather recent. Uh I wanna say Lamar Miller was uh was he on the, the NFL network? I seen the thing, I didn't really get a chance to hear what he was saying, but I, I Oh, read he was thing. advocating to getting uh Adrian, Adrian Peterson, Peterson yes, think, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so how do you feel? Do you think that Adrian Peterson could be an asset with the already crowded backfield that we kind of have right now? You still got Tyler Irvin in the mix, you still got Blue, you got Foreman, you got Miller himself. Um do you I see think I know, Peterson finding a way? I think if I think it's a there yeah, is definitely a way. I mean if you want to fit him in on the red zone, I think I think you can go ahead for goal line situations and when you need a hard play action or something like that. Now I think he can be suited well in those scenarios. He's not done, but he's just not what he was, and and that's why people are willing to say that he's done because they they from the seeing I left on the year end that it it they the fact that Adrian. Peterson is in this situation and then like on the couch that we're talking about where he wants to play versus just being picked up FLT to show you that how they develop positions out here. They you couldn't hear that a little bit. The hell out of running backs and um safeties for whatever reason I don't know because they're your last line the defense, I would always want. It looked like he's about to get a few years ago. Sam mm-hmm. Chancellor and Eric Berry and Thomas and all these guys getting paid. You would think, yeah, premium, but it's not. And it's, I mean, it's it's fucking. But I mean, yeah. nah, you don't know what you got going. It's cutting out real bad on that end. I'm like you, like every other word. So you kind of. Oh, no. Uh, J.K., oh. what's up? Because I want to get back to that thought because, like I said, I was pitching piece, bits and pieces of it. Um, but, yeah. Uh, with, with, me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. 
You want to restate oh, okay. that thought? It sounds a little bit clear right oh, now. Oh, yeah. All I was saying, I was saying, man, it's 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 just that people have just been so accustomed to seeing him that they can't fathom the fact that they would be any worse than he already is. And I think that's where a lot of fans went when, when that they don't want him on the team or don't pick him up or hell no or whatever. You're not saying it because Adrian and Peterson. It's just the fact that being devalued out here and guys are getting devalued. You get the next game you're gone. And pretty if if certain players, even on our team, if they say people are going to be saying the same shit regardless of what they're doing. Because what have you done for me lately is all, all my fans who team progressing and going to the promised land and you can't do that for guys hurting a lot of how much you like them with this and that if you can't contribute then i mean all you're gonna be talking about is what could have happened if such and such was here and we don't and aren't we as texans fans are we just tired of having those scenarios well if jj and we be merciless with it. You know what I'm Man. saying? Like we, I'm tired of talking. But to uh, it's almost like the, like overall, we we just been a what if city lately. Because I mean, just we That's talk it. about with with the the James. What if CP3 was healthy? What if you know this would happen? What exactly. if this, it's, it's a it's a lot of what if shit going on, man. And I, I'm I'm tired of that shit myself. You know, the, the Astros had it. Wasn't no, they left it all out on the field. Wasn't no what ifs. You know, Bill O'Brien seemed like he was tired of it. You, you know, you two nuts. We we're all. <laughs> When he made the same analogy I just did. I said, what if? He said the almost team. Yeah, yeah. He did say, hey, boy, at the end of the day, I mean, take full responsibilities for your contributions of us being in that situation. Hmm. That will be I interesting. I mean, G-check yourself first. That's a very interesting one, Jeremiah. Would you, would you, could you see Andre Johnson being a, a wide receivers coach? Not now. And I, I mean, maybe down for a professional team, no. I think he would go back to Miami – or he would help kids out in high school before he would actually build a team, let alone a team like the Texans, and do some shit like that. I just don't, I just don't see it. I don't hear it in his voice, and I just don't. An advisor, somebody showing to do what, do some drills, but like being in a day in day out with a Texans shirt on on the sideline with a headset, I just don't see it. <laughs> okay. Who says I got a question for Wink? You see the do you see the offensive line good enough to protect Watson or maybe there's a good chance of a free agent making the fifty three man roster? It's Chandler. Um I'll sit back and wait. Y'all ain't finna hear Wink say nothing about none of this. I, I told y'all I wasn't finna say nothing that was once I made my last statement about class and everything that I had to say and all the input that I moment. You know, to go, go have nothing else to say. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if and if I don't, how can I be let down? How can I be let down? I'm at, I'm at that point, and being critical of this, I have to be because I mean I know y'all don't like it, but at the end of the day, somebody got to do it. Okay. I know y'all feel like yeah, y'all hear hate from the city from from people who ain't a fuck about it they just doing this because this is their job and it's something easy to do i'm doing this shit making no money providing it up because i love to do it and this team is everything outside of other things you know but when it comes to sports teams I, and i just want to see them do good and we deserve situations we got some of the best players in the country that are respected that respected across the league why in the fuck are we taking more seriously I'm sick of I'm sick of not being taken seriously. Yeah, I feel well, I mean, if y'all feel a certain kind of way, I mean, cool. Man, I mean, because you got to look at you got to look way. at it. Uh, what was that? The uh, was that the 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 fucking Bengals game where they talking about we just lost to the to the worst team in the league or some shit because we lost to the Jags. You know what I'm saying? And you know that stigma was for, it was early on on the Jags. It was it was bad. Right. You know, and uh, that was that was the thing. I mean, right. that 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 lack of respect, man. It's uh, definitely unfortunate. So I saw Jeremiah ask earlier, was letting Brooks Reed go a mistake? How do you feel about I that? I mean, yeah. I don't feel he has the production to go on and he was a mistake. A mistake, mm-hmm. Connor Barwin, who was getting yeah, or D'Amico Ryan or, you know, Owen Dan 
and fucking, you know, some of these offensive linemen, AJ Boo, yeah, you know, very huge contributions on it's not, and they not to be fucked with doing what they can and making sure that they are a major reason why they in the position that they in because they and they're not trying to and they trust their teammates. Mm-hmm. You gotta understand these teams they win, they trust one another. Say so what yeah. There's a lot of people talking about the Patriots right now too, but at the end they can't say they didn't have what their team was trust. Yeah. But say so what you will about the organization. I didn't have no fun. I didn't have it I didn't like the way they do shit. Mm-hmm. Tell me one tell me one time you ever heard somebody say that they didn't trust who the fuck was leading them to the to the problems lane. Yeah. And that's the thing that's the thing I want to get on to, because that's basically what it, it seemed like it boiled down to me about Brooks is I'm getting paid a bunch of money to play a game and I'm not having fun. That's just basically what it sounded like to me. Like, because the thing is, it's not gonna be the same at every fucking franchise. And I feel like you got to take that. You got to expect the change to come with that. And so, regardless of what happens, like I said, you see exactly like you said, all the players uh, for the Patriots that have been complaining, but they got hardware. You know what I mean? So they, they, they exactly. at, at least that much. But my thing is, again, like I say, you spent a, a year or so in a bad situation. You didn't gone off. You didn't got you a ring. Why are you even still fucking worried about that? That's that was the, the least fun I had in my career. Like, why is that even a conversation? That's that's what I'm not understanding. I think because at the end of the day, people really because at the end of the day, I want to hear shit like that because there's plenty of people out here who want to know their experiences with teens. We've been begging and dying to know, and the only way we were ever gonna know how fucking Andre Johnson felt about this team, you would have never heard it if he was going to speak out to the real media. It mm-hmm. it took Arian Foster to retire to come up with his own fucking show for Arian, for Andre Johnson, Arian Foster, DeAndre Hopkins, and whoever else Arian Foster going to have on the show to talk about this team the right way and is opening our fucking eyes on how fucking corrupt and inept it really is mm-hmm. on the inside and outside. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I do want to know because at the end of the day, me knowing shit like that shows me character. And at the end of the day, I'm a very good judge of character. And anybody I've ever judged, uh, characters I've ever judged, never been wrong, not to this day. So you, we need to know who the fuck we dealing with. So why not? Why not show us? <laughs> you say who rooting for Golden Tillings. State? Uh, who? Jay Dillson. Hell some, no, somebody, no. somebody rooting for Golden State. Oh, uh, no. But yeah, man, so... I guess we get into it a little bit, a, a little bit of, a little bit of Rockets talk. You know, it's still it's still a little bit of a sore spot, but we ain't gonna trip. It is what it is at this point in time. Um, and Big O, uh, Wes Welker wasn't the coach; he was an assistant yeah, wide assistant. receiver yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, assistant. yeah, he was just an assistant. He now he's the full fledged wide receiver coach now. Okay. Um, the thing is, you see. Uh, you see um, a lot of talk, a lot of, of, of conversation. You know, everybody's making it a foregone conclusion that the Rockets are – I mean, not the Rockets, the, the, the Cavs are out of the conversation. And so what's going to happen next season? You know, are the Rockets going to pursue LeBron or, or, or what's going to happen with that? And uh, I kind of want to know what y'all think. Like I said, I'm going to drop, uh, drop a little – as a matter of fact, I need to do y'all a little raffle on the uh, sauce before I forget. Um, but I want to know how y'all feel. Because I've heard a lot of people, you know, with different points of views and, and different thoughts as to why they feel, you know, I, I'm 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 more in the uh, PG camp, but I'm I'm pretty sure PG is leaning towards the Lakers, especially since James Harden has his number. He ain't gonna want to, you know, numbers are very important to players, and so uh, yeah. I don't know if he, I don't know if that shit is gonna shake. Um, you say Tillman for TJ is going after LBJ, LBJ and PG also, but my thing is like I I, I pursue PG first, but then you know that that might hurt. Uh, LeBron's feelings, you know what I'm saying? He I don't, wants to be the yeah, man. When, when it comes to the situation for me, I don't care about none of that semantic shit. I don't give a fuck how we win as long as we win. Ain't nobody going to be saying shit when we got that hardware. Well. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck how I get done. I don't care what happens. I'm starving for a fucking win. Yeah. When you don't, when you get hungry and when you're <laughs> starving, you, it don't care what it is. Everything tastes good. You know why? Because you want an empty stomach. So at the end of the day, as a fan, I'm starving 
for wins. I'm starving for success. I'm starving for championships. I'm starving to be able to talk to other fans and talk down other fans. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> the fuck you, bitch? Get your rings up. You are, I'm ready to talk like that. Fuck you mean? You ain't no dynasty no more. We got your number now, ho. That's how I want to talk to people. I can't talk to nobody like that but Titans fans. I can't talk to nobody like that but Titans fans. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Um, Here's my thing. That's funny shit. Now, with the way that the losses are coming, I said again that if the the Warriors or Rockets lost to the Warriors, that would definitely benefit the the chances of a LeBron showing up if he lost in the finals because then it doesn't look like the KD situation at all. He lost to the Warriors, so he's not going to join the Warriors. If he goes and joins the Rockets, another team that lost to the Warriors, I think people actually would sympathize with that more so than – be like, oh, he going to join a super team, and he going to. I think more people be like, you know what, good. We tired of fucking seeing the Warriors winning. We tired of seeing them old gloating ass bitches when they get all the calls, all the shit, and then they cry anytime anything happens. Steph want to throw his fucking sloppy ass fucking mouthpiece and shit, spreading germs and shit. Um, yeah. And so I think that people want to see a situation at this point. They would love to see the Warriors get just demolished. And because I mean, you hear, I mean, you see, you see the Cavs fans talking now. You see the rest of the nation. They like, damn, we see what everybody in Houston was was bitching about because shit is is going on right now. And so uh, right. my thing is, I, I think that with the outcome of this finals, that the public opinion will change on a lot of things because I think people are, you know, you have those bandwaggers. They still gonna do it. But I think as far as people in the rest of the country, they're just hoping anybody comes up. And defeats the Warriors. They're just tired of seeing them fucking win. I mean, it's just it, right. it, it's some lopsided ass bullshit. They're a mm. team that people got tired of quick. Mm. You know, even when even when um, LeBron was on Miami, nobody got tired of him going or winning. Or, mm. Nobody's tired of LeBron James going to the finals. Nobody's mm. tired of that. Yeah. If anything, people want him to make it so that they can say they beat him. Exactly. Ain't nobody saying, I want to go. I, I can't wait to see Steph in the fuck. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying, I want to be Durant. Ain't nobody saying, I want to be Harden. Ain't nobody in the fucking in the fucking NBA, regardless if you you a player, you a coach, you a, a media person, you the cameraman, you the motherfucking janitor. It don't matter. At the end of the day, people want to beat LeBron James for a reason. Mm-hmm. And the thing, nobody, nobody. People just want to go along the ride to beat Steph. I mean, beating Steph cool, but beating LeBron is way better. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Because here's the deal, man. Here, here's what it is. It's like, and I heard something about somebody said that uh, Steph was trying to buck up to LeBron last night. Steph get his motherfucking ass beat smooth the fuck up. But see, this is what it is though with those Warriors motherfuckers. Like, man, he'll slap the off, see, them, them motherfuckers are a bunch of little conniving ass sneak. Like they, they, they're all snakes. It's like a den of snakes because this is all it is. Curry was not being brave. Curry was trying to take an L for the team because one Curry, I don't know what his stats are like. He ain't been playing like Curry, whoever he's supposed to be. I know that much. At least nah, he wasn't he against the Rockets. He's still fine, bro. Yeah, that boy Wardell, Wardell Curry. Uh, yeah. I don't even know what that shit. Who, who named him? But uh, how you get from Dale to Wardell? Like, your dad ain't even. He ain't, he ain't Wardell. Ain't even, you know, <laughs> name you Wardell. Like get the fuck out of here. But um, Wardell, that's an ugly my, ass name. My, <laughs> my thing is, is that. You get rid of LeBron, you get him ejected, you get him in some type of trouble throughout this series. Well, then it's easier right now. There's even less work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like he really over there hating, dry hating, because he was on some shit talking about. Oh, let's let's not give LeBron all the credit. You know, it's other guys that played. What the fuck has any of them motherfuckers Bro. done, dog? Bro, when you try to give other niggas the credit, they do what Jr. did just last night. Exactly. They lose the fucking game. Exactly, dog. <coughs> how the fuck did you? How the fuck? How the fuck you got the thing right in front of you? Your stupid ass can't look up because you got Kate Michelle on the mind. You thinking about that salt around the bed? I don't know, bro. The ass shots is gone, bro. I don't know if you saw in the crowd or what. Oh, but um, I mean, if she's still hitting you up, if she's still DMing you or something, bro, think about the game first, then then go do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know. Uh, I don't know. Let's answer the south line. Yeah, yeah. Let, me see, let me see what we got going on the south side here. Let's make sure everything is is copacetic. You know, you know what? Hold on. My fault, y'all. On the fucking south line, I forgot the most important piece. I apologize. Oh, no. Well, not the most important piece, but one of the more important pieces. And I might not have that bitch on me. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. The real, the real, the real underrated, the most consistent player 
outside of KD on that on that basketball team is um the other light skinned uh, what's the name Clay Thompson Clay Thompson yeah 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 he the real every time he touched the ball the fucking shit hitting the bottom of the net it seemed like every other play he don't he he don't even miss that much when he gets the ball and his production numbers pretty much stayed the same because you know. He on, he on the team that's stacked. But I guarantee yeah. you, Steph go anywhere. I mean, Clay go anywhere. And, go, man, they going to miss that. Clay is a, a better uh, a better um, player than, than Steph Curry, hands down. Like, it's not even close. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Overall, I like, Steph, so. Steph just got the benefit of being there and kind of being, you know, having that shot. And he just shoots a little bit better. But if you're talking about straight-up defense – uh, you talking yeah. about just overall overall better player yeah. is 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 play. Yeah. Not even close. Exactly. And and watching him closely this 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 series that he had with us and and you know, just how like how he's been playing, bro, he's been the most consistent player on that team. Draymond, I used to think he was the heart and soul of the t- fucking team. I thought they were winning because of him at one point. That obviously ain't true because he trash. No, yeah. He doing everything he can to lose them a motherfucking game because he's so boo boo. <laughs> Like, yeah, that motherfucker just do cleanup duty and gets to to, to benefit from that. Uh, says uh, yeah. last night the game decided to reverse the call. Yeah, what what happened with that? I didn't watch the shit. Uh, I didn't. I, like I said, because I told you I'm not watching the finals. Like I'm not, I'm not dedicating any time to that shit. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm oh. not watching it either. I didn't. I watched a little bit of it. I didn't even bother to watch it. And so my thing is this, man. Uh, I see somebody said they, they reversed a charging call. So what happened? Was it was it a blocking call? Then they turned it into a yeah, charging call. They did. Okay. They did. They did. Okay. They damn sure okay. did. Yeah, I seen that. I think I want to say that happened like the second and third quarter. It was egregious too. Yeah. Like it was so outlandish. Like I seen somebody in the paint like get pushed. Like and nothing got called. I was like, Are you serious right yeah. now? But like, I mean. They want to act like they really let dudes play when at the end of the day they already got this shit mapped out. You know what I'm saying? Like, people calling in, people from the West Coast was even calling in. It's like, man, this is some bullshit, bro. It ain't no reason that, like, when Richard Sherman and other guys from mm, the West Coast oh, yeah. come out and say, man, this shit is some bullshit. Exactly. Like, but that's the thing, like, though. NBA, real, NBA referees have the biggest impact on any game, of, of any of the games, the, the professional games. NBA referees have the most impact. They have they control the entire game because with, with basketball again, it's about getting in a rhythm. It's about getting into a right. flow. And if you can't get in that rhythm right, it's over with. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. So and they can easily. I mean, it's just it's, that shit there is, is is wild, man. So again, fuck it. I ain't I ain't really tripping on that. But <clears throat> here's the deal, man. We reaching uh, about that time. And so, uh, I want to start. I say we're gonna start wrapping it up. Uh, if y'all got any other texts or so, because the uh, the call, I forgot, that's my fault. I ain't had that shit all the way uh, properly set up. So if y'all got any other little last little minute texts, I think we got one here from. Uh, you notice every game that we lost. Oh, that was old. The ref had his hair slick. That's funny. That was old. Uh, text into the sauce line. It says, uh, "I'm think what's gonna happen in July during NBA free agency period is that the Rockets need to sign." Clint Capella, Chris Paul, hopefully LeBron James, but I'm worried about the max contracts yeah. or pay cuts because we can't let Clint Capella walk. That's my question for you and the Wink. It's a uh, channel, man. It's not. Nah, don't don't Capella even worry about. Nowhere. I'm telling y'all. Y'all heard what Maury said when the reporter asked him. Well, you know, that's exactly. have you thought about the math that you're going to have to do to try to retain these guys? He's like, we got new he math. Said, I don't give a fuck about he, he, he said, exactly. we got new math. So what does that tell you? That means we got big money mm-hmm. behind this. This ain't this ain't you know. Uh, <clears throat> Leslie, this is this is uh this is this is this that that Fertitta money, man. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. he he we talking golden nugget. We talking about we got big money behind it. So he's trying to win. Tell me, Fertitta wants to win. He don't care about Hell nothing. Yeah. That boy basically said we gonna do what it takes. We gonna go after. Some we people. gonna do what the fuck it takes. We gonna do win. because at the end of the day, he doing everything that I just said. We starving for a win. He tired of hearing all this bullshit. Mm-hmm. He tired of watching ESPN. You think a motherfucker like that don't watch ESPN every day to see what the hell the Rockets and and somebody in that organization ain't came across the channel and directed it towards him? Trust me, bro. Hey, it happens. It's been happening in force for quite some time. People is paying attention to the channel. And, uh, hey, it's a reason because at the end of the day, we, we, we got to talk and we got to say some shit that other people just ain't going to talk about. Like, because a lot of guys not talking about the shit we talking about. Exactly, exactly. It's unfortunate. <laughs> well, I say don't let them. We make sure that we will. So y'all know where to come to get the flavor. Y'all know where to come to get the sauce, man. But before we wrap it up, anything you want to say before we get up out of here? Oh, man, just let me go ahead and give a quick fucking Friday, man. This oh, is yes, dude on my job. He's so lame. Like, 
he trash like he, <laughs> he, he, he lazy bro like and i just like and his breath stink oh, you know what man. i'm saying like in passing bro like oh, how shit. your breath smell like nigga how your breath smell like sweaty bowels nigga at, at eight in the morning like i just don't i don't know bro uh, like i don't know what's wrong with him but yeah he out of there so fuck him <laughs> God damn, that's there. Ain't no Fortnite Friday. Fuck that Fortnite. I ain't fuck with that shit, PUBG nigga. Uh, man, yeah, PUBG. Man, have they updated? Have they done yeah, anything? Yeah, man, that whole PUBG looked like a brand new game. They didn't. They didn't put the new map on that bitch. They didn't kind of cleaned up the interface and shit. That whole looking smooth and shit like a. But the uh, game ain't even done. So once the game is completely done, I guarantee you, watch all the Fortnite junkies gonna stop wasting all their damn money and come uh, over to PUBG. Oh uh, no, nah, they 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 happy about some 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 shopping carts and some other shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's that's why I say Fortnite is, is more for if you're having fun just playing around being goofy. So like that's like I, I can understand that uh, but if I'd rather be like on some more Let's just be real. Fortnite is for kids. Fucking PUBG is for grown men. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, 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 you young juvies. But with that being said, man, I want to shout out to everybody. I want to uh Say everybody thank you, man, just for taking the time because time is oh, yeah. so motherfucking valuable, man. That's the one commodity that you, you yeah. can't get back. And so the fact that y'all spend the time that y'all fucking with the sauce, man, is greatly appreciated from the uh, bottom of my soul, man. And I want to say shout out to Wingman for taking the time to be on. You know what I'm saying? We, gotta, we missed it on a Wednesday, but we got to make sure we make it up. Oh, yeah. So it's all Gucci. Um, oh, yeah. uh, there'll be a den later on tonight. Actually, we should be having a sauce society here shortly. Uh, I got to get that together. It was supposed to be. Can I get eight, in on the den? Yeah, man. If you want to get in on the den, we can make that shit shake. We, uh, we'll do a den after the Sauce Society. So uh, Sauce Society was supposed to be uh, starting at 8, so we ran, ran a little bit late. That's on me. Um, so okay. look for about 8.30, and then let's say den, probably about 9.30, something like that. And we can make that shit shake. But it'll be uh, we can be live at 5 in the den. Cause I got, uh, got a couple of good ideas for the den this evening. So that's a BET. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, shit. If I was working with him, shit, I'd have some of that Dr. J.J. White money, too. What? Shit, boy. Shit. Yeah, boy. He Gucci. He Gucci. JJ, breaking bread. J.J. White Gucci for life, man. So he, he ain't. He, he, yeah. look, he, he hey, I ain't even mad at him. It is what he said. I told I said, like I said, I told you. I told I you all in the DM. Like, I'm trying to remove. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go the month of June. I'm going to try to go the month of June. My best. This is not gonna be impossible. It's gonna be some shit. I'm gonna just say fuck that shit. But I'm gonna try my best to not be negative. Now, like just shit that I would normally say fuck that too. Like because normally I, I would talk shit about you know Drake on the Drake and Pusha T disc because Drake got ate up and that's something we could definitely dig deep into yeah, Drake again. Definitely got but. He definitely got served. He got oh, served man. like a Marion. He got served like a Marion when the boys took the scene and the white boy told him you got served. Oh, like, Jesus man. Christ. Good like, good. I stole your moves, did it better than you, bitch. And yeah, I served you. <laughs> For five racks. <laughs> Look! Look! Hi there. I'm gonna I'm I'm be. I'm gonna be. Yeah, I'm gonna be two thirty for for uh for July first. It's early in the month. I'm like, I was, oh, that ain't gonna be nothing. So, but uh, with that being said, man, I appreciate each and every one of y'all again. Like I say, look about eight thirty for the uh Salt Society, and then about nine thirty nine forty five is for um to have some Christian action tonight, and then later on, you know, we'll jump on the mixer action and and, and see what's shaking. But with that being said, man. Sauce Nation, y'all be cool like y'all be cool. Again, shout out to everybody. I appreciate y'all. Chunking up a deuce. We out. Y'all stay saucy.